This uh, slide starts our 1970s unit, and we begin with three different groups or causes, if you will, uh, and the first of those being women's issues, and specifically women's rights. Okay. Um, the 50s, if we go back a little bit, had encouraged sort of a home life for women, as they were told to be mothers and housewives. Um, however, the 60s brought a new movement that questioned kind of women's role uh, in society. And if we go back a little bit to 1963, a woman named Betty Friedan uh, published a book called The Feminine Mystique. Uh, you see a picture of Friedan there, and then the book, uh, The Feminine Mystique. Uh, now again, this goes back to 1963. Um, and The Feminine Mystique uh, is written to question uh, what Friedan calls the cult of domesticity, the cult of the domestic life. Uh, that women had been trapped um, in this role as uh, a domestic housekeeper, um, homemaker, and mother. And because uh, of this cult of domesticity, this cult of the domestic life, um, women had been trapped and had not been able to realize their full potential. This is the feminine mystique, that women have been... Uh, trapped in this role of uh, wife and homemaker and mother. And because of that, they've not been able to realize their full potential. That's Friedan's argument. In a couple of years later, in 19, excuse me, 66, she founded NOW, the National Organization for Women. Okay. Um, and the goal of NOW, the National Organization of Women, um, was to achieve the full participation of women um, in mainstream society. That, uh, you know, they had been sent to the margins of society. That men had dominated this, the, the American culture. And it was time for women to take their rightful place uh, as equals in society. They demanded equal pay for equal work. Now, another woman supporting Friedan and supporting the National Organization of Women was Gloria Steinem. Okay. Um, in 1972, Steinem founded a magazine that she would call Ms. Magazine. Um, typically, uh, when men are known as Mr., women, married women at least, had been known as Mrs. Mrs. Tom Smith, Mrs. Bob Jones, and so forth. Uh, that somehow, when you became a married woman, you gave up your own identity and took the role, uh, the identity, rather, of your husband. Uh, and you were known as Mrs. Well, Steinem argues that women should not have to give up their own identity um, and with that comes a new title, Ms. Ms. Barbara Smith, Ms. Susan Jones. Um, they don't have to be known by their husband. Um, they, can, they can forge their own identity. Uh, Ms. Magazine is still around today, still being published. Okay. Um, and again, the, the sort of the equal pay for equal work uh, argument. Um, in 1972, when Steinem founded Ms. Magazine, for every dollar a man made, women made 59 cents um, for doing the same job. Uh, so barely, barely half of what men were being paid. Now, the ultimate goal of the feminist movement, and this is really when the, the, the word feminism comes into vogue, is in the 70s here. The ultimate goal of the feminist movement is the ERA. The Equal Rights Amendment. Um, this amendment was first proposed way back in 1923, uh, shortly after women got the right to vote. Um, it simply says, Equality of rights under the law shall not be 
um, denied or abridged on account of sex. So you can't deny me my rights simply because I'm women. Uh, I'm a woman. That's the argument of the Equal Rights Amendment. Now, here's how this works. Um, it was reintroduced when we get into this time period and passed by Congress in 1972. But that's not how an amendment becomes law. Amendments to the Constitution have to be approved by three-fourths of the states. So at this time, they would need 38 states. Okay, we've got 50 by now. So you need 38 states to approve the amendment for it to become law. doesn't matter what Congress says. Uh, amendments have to be approved by the people. It had 10 years to be passed, or approved, rather, by the states. Congress passed it in 1972. Uh, so that meant by 1982 that they had to get 38 states to approve it. By the time the amendment's life is up here, in 1982, um, it had only been approved by 35 of the required 38 states. So it's very, very close to becoming law. Um, one of the reasons that the... Um, uh, equal Rights Amendment will fail is because of a woman, a woman named Phyllis Schlafly. Phyllis Schlafly, and here you see a picture of Schlafly over here. She will lead what's known as the Stop the ERA Movement. Okay. Um, Schlafly argues that if the Equal Rights Amendment is passed, that all of the special protections that women had worked to earn for themselves would be taken away. So workplace safety laws, that uh, women are not required to do the same type of physical labor that men are. Um, workplace safety laws such as uh, um, maternity leave. Women had worked to get uh, the right to have a partial paid maternity leave when they had a baby. Um, women were not required to serve, uh, to register for military service. If the Equal Rights Amendment were passed, they would be required to do that. So Schlafly's argument is, look, right, let's work for equal pay. That's great and all, but Equal Rights Amendment means we're going to lose a lot of the protections that we currently have as women. Um, and Schlafly's argument would convince at least 15 states um, to vote against it. So, the ERA will die in 1982, uh, having only gotten 35 of the required 38 uh, states to approve it. Okay. Now, the other big topic we have to talk about here, if we're talking about women, is abortion. Okay. Um, by 1960, there was no federal law regulating abortion. So, some states banned it um, entirely, uh, some states approved it. Those who banned it, we ended up with um, black market abortions performed in unsanitary, unsafe conditions. So um, it will all come to a head in 1973 in Texas. Texas banned abortions entirely. So a Texas woman decides to challenge the state law. She comes to be known by the anonymous name of Jane Roe. You know, the male version is obviously John Doe. This is Jane Roe. It's an anonymous name uh, to protect the woman who was filing for this. The case comes to be known as Roe v. Wade, Roe v. Wade, in 1973. This is one of those landmark Supreme Court decisions. Um, and in it, uh, the Supreme Court would legalize abortions, right? uh, and there any state law that contradicted that was overturned. So Roe v. Wade would legalize abortion. Almost immediately, opposition groups begin to form, right? um, and they really divide up into two camps, pro-life and pro-choice. Right? Um, the opposition is led by the Catholic Church. Okay? 
uh, they form what's called as the National Right to Life Committee. This would be the pro-life side. Um, and it really comes down to a definition of life um, and when you consider life beginning. Those that see life beginning at conception see abortion as murder. That as soon as the baby is conceived, that is a living being, and to abort that living being is murder. Those who see life beginning at birth see abortion as giving the woman a choice to control their own bodies. Right? Um, typically, not always, but typically, Republicans are seen as pro-life, Democrats are seen as pro-choice. Not always, but generally that's how it works out. Right? Um, and again, you, can, you, you are free to believe whichever you want. I'm just telling you what the two sides are and why they believe what they believe. Um, Pro-life people see abortion as murder because life begins at conception. Pro-choice people see abortion as a legal choice for the woman because life begins at birth. It comes down to uh, how you define life and when you see life beginning. To this day, still, the um, abortion is legal. Right? Uh, Roe v. Wade has not been overturned. It is still upheld. Uh, every time we see a more conservative swing in the court, everybody thinks Roe v. Wade is going to be overturned. But it hasn't happened yet. Right? Um, now, Speaking of abortion here and pro-choice, right? there is a group called Planned Parenthood. Um, they provide, they, they sort of pride themselves um, in providing safe, inexpensive abortions. They operate abortion clinics around the country, um, among other things. They don't just do abortion. They do lots of things. Uh, but some of the funding they get goes to... Um, providing safe, inexpensive abortions. Planned Parenthood clinics are often the site of protests, uh, demonstration, and sometimes even violence um, by pro-life groups. So this one isn't going away anytime soon. Um, it is a hotly debated topic, uh, one people on both sides uh, are very passionate about. 